want to thank you for joining us here on Polk Place. I'm Brian Lacey and from Polk County Emergency Management, sit and talk to us about hurricane season because you know what happens on June 1st. It's hurricane season. It's Paul Womble. How you doing? I'm good. Good morning, yeah. Brian. Yeah. How, how's things going over there? Uh, we're good. I don't get to see y'all that much. That's that's a good thing. <laughs> 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 whenever, whenever, whenever I'm over there to see our mutual friend, <laughs> you're not there that early. No, no, <laughs> he's the early guy. <laughs> well, it is upon us June 1st, uh, all the way to November 30th. Is that correct? That's correct. Hurricane season. Uh, you guys do an outstanding job, and and I think the thing that that we're here to talk about today is preparation. Uh, let's dive into that and talk about some of the things that the folks can do to be prepared. Yeah, and we should be prepared all year, you know, not just hurricanes. It's six months out of the year, but, you know, we can have severe weather in the winter, um, wildfires in the spring, you know, all the other hazards that we face here. So, yeah, being prepared is important. But hurricane season is six months out of the year. Um, so, you know, have no one away. Um, what's your family going to do if we have an emergency? I have to be at work. If we have a storm, I'm, I'm gonna be at work. So that affects how my family prepares. Um, so understanding some of that's important. You know, what could happen, right? We're Polk County, we're not <clears throat> coastal. So we don't have evacuation zones and no storm surge, thankfully, from the water, but we could have uh, strong winds, you know, heavy rain, flooding rain, you know, significant amount of rain. Uh, tornadoes, power outages, so, you know, and that blows things around the wind. It could damage your home, be without power. So those are the hazards that you need to prepare for. You can't just say, well, it's a hurricane. Well, what does that mean? It's really about the hazards. Being a lifelong Polk <laughs> County guy, um, you've been here throughout several of them, and we're working on a project currently uh, marking the 20th anniversary of the 2004 hurricanes. And I think that's something that taught us all, I think I've been here maybe six, seven years, and, and, and taught us all that we really need to be prepared because for the longest time, Polk County wasn't struck and then all of a sudden we catch three and it just seems like we, every year we've gotta be on the lookout. Talk to me a little bit about what 2004 taught us from a resident and emergency management standpoint. Yeah, three three storms. Polk County is the only county in the nation that's had a hurricane come through the county three times in a single in a single year. I don't know if we want to keep that record, but <laughs> but we, we got it. So, you know, it was just one after the other and and we didn't have all the technology back then, twenty years ago that we have for communications and videos and notifications, you know, social media wasn't around back then and our infrastructure just was not as robust. So, you know, we, we still apply lessons. The, the biggest lesson back after Hurricane Charlie when cell phones were out and, you know, back then we were using, you know, Nextel. That was I out. remember them well. <laughs> Bleep. Yeah. So we, we, we used, we printed we, flyers. Uh, we had what's called the Recovery Times. It was a front and back one pager of, you know, where to go for help and where, you know, where were shelters and where was water and, all those things and we've used those that's still part of our plan today if you know we've seen technology fail or become overloaded and uh, so that's, that's you know we, we we learned those lessons biggest le you know the, probably one of the biggest things we learned was that you know we we can you know have significant impacts and it had been decades so you know it's a we, we've been busy we, we've had hurricanes you know we had Irma in 17 threatened and and from Hurricane Dorian in 19, which would have been catastrophic, flooding and winds, and and we've had you know we've had Ian and and Idalia, so it's it's really been nonstop, and we just have to be prepared. It's not we're just inland and it doesn't happen here because it does. As you talked about the past, I'm going to throw two words at you. I just want to see the look at on your face, Orange Dome. <laughs> what were those things we used to do? The hurricane yeah, we, at the we, start? We, we would do a hur hurricane expo yep. every year. And, you know, we've, we do dis different outreach now, uh, but it's still just important to get the word. We've got so many people moving to Polk County from all over the country that never have experienced a hurricane. We have different, you know, our, 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 our weather is different here, right? So they, that's part of understanding what could happen. You know, the, 
most people don't realize our strongest severe weather, our biggest tornadoes in our history have been right around Christmas. Yep. Um, as strong cold fronts move, move through. So that's understand and then know what you're gonna do. You know, we, we, we have shelters for people that don't have other uh, choices. Um, and, and especially if you live in a mobile home, in a, an RV, you know, some type of housing that's, is, is gonna be in danger in strong winds. You know, plan A should be to go, you know, friend, family, somebody from church, go to their house if it's, you know, a substantial house. Um, don't, don't plan to, if you plan to leave, you know, part of the challenge is even, is more accurate as the hurricane center forecasts have become. You, you still just don't know until a couple of days for sure where the, where the thing's going to go. So, um, what are you going to do? You know, if you're going to stay home, prepare for no power and, 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 and potentially no water. So if your electricity goes out at your house right now, what can't you do? Probably can't flush, probably can't cook, probably can't charge your phone, and your internet's probably gonna go out. So you've, uh, you know, how are you gonna communicate with family? How are you gonna find out from, you know, get the news? So that should be all part of your preparedness. Let's talk shelters briefly. Uh, a few years ago, there was a heartbreaking story of, of folks that uh, left their animals out. Let's talk uh, shelters with that you can take animals in, and let's talk special needs shelters too, if we could, please. Yeah, so we have pet friendly shelters in the county. Um, you know, if you have cats, dogs, and they need, you, if you're gonna go to those pet friendly shelters, bring a crate, bring some, you know, bring their food, gotta have proof of vaccinations, right? Because we still have to keep the people safe. And then special needs program is for people that have some type of medical need. They may be on oxygen, they may have a concentrator. And you can even do dialysis at home. So those people need electricity, they need to be plugged in. So the special needs program is a, just like our sheltering program is a partnership with Polk County Public Schools, uh, with McKeel um, Schools, and with the Department of Health, and certainly the you know, county divisions. Mm -hmm. um, but we have, we have special needs shelters. They have generators, not all of our shelters have generators, but the special needs shelters are designed to be able to have electricity for people that have medical equipment so, you know, they need to stay plugged in to stay alive and well and during the, you know, blue skies. So if we have a storm and it's, you know, they need to go to a shelter to have that. But that should be the last resort. Yeah. Again, have a plan, you know, family, talk to your doctor, um, you know, especially and our shelters only have a certain medical level of care that the Department of Health provides, yeah. is able to provide just based on nur the number of nurses and capabilities. I mean, we're in. We're in, we're in school buildings, they're not hospitals, they're not nursing homes. So if, when you register with our program, you know, go to the county website, you can get the register registration information. We triage that, if you're above the level of care, then, then our staff works with you. We have arrangements with hospitals and nursing homes uh, that you may need that higher level of care. So we help you make that, make that plan. And speaking of making that plan, that plan, especially if you're in the special needs end of it, that plan isn't to be made the day before you're sure it's gonna hit. Because talk about the importance of getting them to and from the shelters. Yeah, transportation is another part of that program. Uh, if, and, and we can even provide transportation through Citrus Connection, mm -hmm. uh, another you know, partnership between you know, local, local agencies, how we all work together. Um, but you can't just call up and, and, and get a, it's, it's not Uber. Um, you know, it takes some planning, it takes some coordination. You know, we've got a couple of thousand folks in the registry and, you know, we have to communicate with them. And um, so it, it's important to prepare and being prepared and having a plan is if you need those services, if those, you don't have any other choice, then you've got to get into our program and we've got to work with you, um, work with, you know, work with the folks to be able to make that happen. It's just not instantaneous. For the new folks, they are projecting a strong storm year. And this year, National Weather Service and all those involved are coming up with a new, in the previous, we've had a cone, which kind of field goal left and right. This year, they're going to a little bit more accurate. Could you kind of explain that? Well, the cone only shows the probability. Me meteorology is about, is, is probability. Hmm. Um, the cone shows what, where the center of the storm could go. It doesn't show how big it is. It doesn't show those hazards that I talked about. It doesn't show the winds, shows winds, forecast wind speed. 
but it doesn't show where the tornadoes are going to be, where the flooding rain is going to be, when, you know, all those things. So it's really, um, it's about the center, which is where the worst weather and the strongest part of the storm is, but it's not the whole picture. So the Hurricane Center for several years has been working on updating that model and that process. So sometime later in, in the summer, in August, we'll, we'll still see a cone, but they're working on the graphics uh, where they'll actually overlay more information about, especially about wind. Um, but it's not just about the center. If, if you think if the center, if you're not in the cone, you're out of harm's way, that is not true. Um, but it's really about the whole picture. What's the guy's name from the Weather Channel? Jim? Uh, Jim Cantori. Yeah, uh, Jim Cantori. Listen, if Jim Cantori comes within 50 <laughs> miles of your house, wherever you are, and it's a hurricane, you are in big trouble. <laughs> That's the safest way to go with that. That's true. <laughs> That's true. So we got about 30 seconds left. What I want you to do is inspire and uh, and really uh, let the folks know how important it is to be prepared this hurricane season. Yeah, it just takes, you know, just takes a little bit of, of thinking, right? You know, what's your family going to do? What's, what does work expect you to do? You know, some of us have to be at work in a storm. That's part of having a plan. What are you going to do if you have no power? And, and do you live in an area that, that if it historically floods or could be your house could be damaged or impacted by strong winds, don't you have to make a plan to go somewhere else? And you can't wait until the last minute. You know, winging it is not an emergency plan. Just takes a little work up front and you're ready. And it's, it's peace of mind, uh, especially, you know, in the, in the when we had three storms in 2004, it's, oh boy, there's another one. And actually there was a fourth one in the Gulf. Florida was hit yeah. four times that year. Hurricane Ivan went to the panhandle, so over and over and over and over, and it's like, man, I'm, I'm we're, we're tired. We yeah, were tired. There, were, there were a bunch of us in the panhandle that scrambled to get back between one of them. I, I remember that well. Yep. Well, as, as I always say when we end this, hopefully I don't see you this season, but that, uh, that, that never comes to fruition. So. No, no, un <laughs> unfortunately it, it doesn't. All right, well, come back and see me again, uh, and uh, always good to see you. Thanks, Brian. Polk County Emergency Management wants you to be prepared this hurricane season. Potential threats from hurricanes include powerful winds, heavy rainfall, coastal and inland flooding. The Atlantic hurricane season runs through November 30th. Now it's important to create a kit of supplies that you could take with you if you are forced to evacuate. This kit will also be useful if you are able to stay in your own home but are still affected by the storm, such as through the loss of power. If you prepare your kit ahead of time, you can alleviate a lot of potential stress of a very chaotic situation. Now, if you need more information on hurricane preparedness, go to www.polk-county.net or give emergency management a call at 863-298-7000. If you enjoyed that episode of Polk Place, I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and even check out the next one.